I fancy my fighting strength, my performance in combat, at least as greatly as Grendel does his. I therefore shall not foreshorten his life with a slashing sword. Too simple a business. Of good arms, he knows nothing of the shattering of shields. Nope. We'll at night play without any weapon. If unweaponed, he dares to face me in fight. The Father in his wisdom shall apportion the honors then. The all-holy Lord, to whichever he think fit. Then the hero lay down, while about him many brave sea warriors bent to their hall rest, not one of them thinking ever to see again their beloved country. Come on one Screed and shed Gliding through the shadows came the walker in the night. The warriors slept, all except one, and this man kept an unblinking watch. He waited, pent heart swelling with anger against his foe. From off the moorland's misting fells came Grendel stalking. The Kerm of Moor under Miss Leotham Grendel Gongan. He moved through the dark, saw with perfect clearness the gold panelled hall, mead drinking place of men. The door gave way at a touch of his hand. Rage inflamed, wreckage bent, he tore the hall's jaws. Hastening onwards, angrily advancing, from his eyes shot a light in unlovely form of fire. He saw in the hall the host of young warriors, and in his heart exulted horrible monster, all his hopes swelling to a gluttonous meal. He meant, he to, meant divide, to divide, monstrous, monstrous in frightfulness, frightfulness, the life the from life each from body, body that lay that in that in place. place. As a first step, he set his greedy hand on a sleeping soldier, savagely tore him, gnashed at his bone joints, bolted huge gobbets, sucked at his veins, and had soon eaten all of the man to his fingers and feet. Then he moved forward, reached to seize our warrior Beowulf, stretched out for him with his spite-filled fist. But the faster man, forestalling, rose up upon his arm and quickly gripped that sickening hand. The upholder of evils immediately knew he had not met on Middle Earth's acres with any other man of a harder hand grasp. He strained to be off, he ailed for his darkness, his company of devils and his den beneath the mere. But Hegelak's great kinsman recalled his evening's utterance and fastened his hold till fingers burst. The monster strained away. The man moved closer. The monster's desire was for darkness between them, direction regardless to get out and run for his fen bordered lair. It was an ill journey that persecutor had of it when he made for Herot. Fear entered the Danes as they heard through the side wall the grisly plaint of the enemy of God, the sobs of the damned one bewailing his pain. The Geats leapt up to defend their great prince. <laughs> they were ignorant then that no sword on earth, not the truest of steel, could touch their assailant, for every sword edge and weapon of victory he had blunted by wizardry. It was then that this monster, moved by spite against our race, found in the end flesh and bone were to fail him, for Higelac's great kinsman, stout-hearted warrior, had him fast by the hand, and hateful to each was the breath of the other. Uh, rip in the giant flesh frame showed then. Shoulder muscles sprang apart, a snapping of tendons, bone locks burst. The arm of the demon was severed from his side and Grendel flew, death sick, to his joyless den where he knew that the end of his life was in sight. Beowulf had cleansed Herod, saved the hall from persecution. As a signal to all, the hero hung the hand, the arm and torn off shoulder, the entire limb, Grendel's whole grip beneath the soaring roof. <laughs> then it was, as I heard it, that hall next morning, 
warrior with warrior walk to see this ghastly limb. <laughs> the eighthlings gazed at the hand high under ceiling. Each nail socket seemed steel to the eye. Each spur on the hand was a talon of fear. Of the bright building, just the roof had survived unmarred and in one piece. Along the wide high roads, the chiefs of the clans came, crossed remote tracts to follow the foe's footprints, who, with strength flagging, had staggered to his fen lair, giving up his heathen soul. There, the death-daubed waters becrimsoned, seethed, gore-hot, and hell engulfed his life in the deep fen pool. Then the clan chiefs wheeled away from the mere in bold mood, joined by the young men, white-mounted warriors. Of Beowulf, many said that over Earth's stretch, of all who wielded sword, he was worthiest to rule. Oh, in saying this, they did not slight in the least the gracious Hrothgar, for he was a good king. Ak that was good kuning. Taking his stand on the steps of the hall, Hrothgar beheld the hand of Grendel, said, Beowulf, I now take you to my bosom as a son. Hold yourself well in this new relation. You shall lack nothing that lies in my gift. May the Almighty Father grant you always the success that on your own account you have guaranteed in deeds. Then Beowulf spoke, son of Ejithyao. I had meant to cut him, clamp him in a lock hold, and I clung to him too loosely to prevent his escape. But now he lives no longer, is forced to await till the Lord in his splendor shall pass his great decree. Then, as a sign of victory, Hrothgar, son of Helfdener, presented to Beowulf a sword worked in gold and onto the floor had brought on eight war horses with glancing bridles, one with a saddle studded with stones, battle seat of the Danes. He bade also compensation to be made again in gold for the men whom Grendel had horribly murdered. What a banquet then was! Gladness mounted, bench mirth rang, the bearers poured out wine from wonderful vessels, Leoth was a summon, Graham Manaskid, Garmin F. Dastach, Berg to the Bengtsweg, Brlasseyal dan Wien of Wunderfatum. When the evening came, they cleared away the benches, covered the floor with beds and bolsters. The Geats laying by their heads their polished shields, their lindens of battle, always ready for war. <laughs> what a nation they were. Then they sank into sleep. But it was soon made clear a survivor was still living, another foe grieving, ailing for its loss. Eders eglech with the ernt vergemunde, Seth the Wedre Gesan Wunyan Shulder, Chealda Streama Sithan Kane we are to Edgibanan Mangan Grey their Fae Mare. In the chilling currents, dwelling in dread waters, the monstrous ogress. Grendel's mother.